We are going to try to balance this and hold it up to the camera. I did it. These are not the probiotics that I suggest. They happen to be the ones that I've done videos on before. And this is the Genova testing for microbiota, which I'll talk about. I think I've talked about this before. Let me just put this down. Today's video is on probiotics. So hi, I'm Dr. Rick. I'm the founder of Herbal 411. And this will round up and finish my gut series where I talked about how the gut, if you have SIBO, MCAS, IBS, IBD, or just bloated all the time, if you have that issue, check out the videos I did. It's a series and it should get you some education about how to maybe change your life. I'm now doing a series on weight loss and I thought that this would be a great way to close one and start the other. So today's topic is probiotics, but if it's useful for weight loss, and I'll just give you a spoiler, it is. And I actually had somebody comment on Facebook about which one. And it's a loaded question, but I'll try to answer that, Ashley, as best as I can. Let me just throw up a couple of uh, studies that I came across that will give you, if you're interested. This was a pretty decent one. It, it talked about uh, the mechanisms of intestinal immunomodulation, meaning not only with regards to weight loss, but cancer fighting, uh, autoimmune disease reversal. I think it's important to treat the gut uh, truthfully in a healthy manner. Even in medicine, we always uh, thought of all the systems, the gut was the most boring. Everybody just giggles when they think about poop. But there's more to it than that. And we found that as the gut microbiome is being studied and more and more revealed, it's, it's crucial in maintaining weight. And it is, I'm going to present to you why I think maybe manipulating your probiotics can get you a couple pounds off. With this study, uh, pretty good mechanistic. It gives you a lot of good information without getting in too deep of the weeds on how you fix the immune system or the gut and it will help the immune system. But I do believe that a lot of skin problems, uh, autoimmune disease, joint problems, uh, Crohn's disease can be settled with a partner. And the partner is the 4,000 different bacteria that are in your gut. It comes out to about one to three pounds of just bacteria. I'm not talking about poop, I'm talking about bacteria that you can culture, like in a culture media. So thank God for these scientists who actually cultured all this stuff up. Otherwise, if nobody played with the poop, like the scientists, then we wouldn't have all this data. This is a nice study. That also gives you some basics on gram, uh, how uh, probiotics are broken down, or the microbiota, that, that culture in your belly is broken down into gram positives, gram negatives, mostly bifidobacter, and lactobacilli and saccharomyces. So if you look on the majority of these boxes, like uh, Garden of Life, you'll see an ingredient label, and that's the ingredient label. This might be blurry, but the ingredient label has the list of different bacteria. I circled three of them here that uh, have been shown in the final data piece that I'll show you to help with weight loss. Uh, this one in particular, Saccharomyces, it's only Saccharomyces. Technically, it's not a bacteria. Saccharomyces is a yeast, but this thing helps even in COVID. I think it helps to decrease IL-6, which is a cytokine. I don't have to get into that, but I'll just put the link to the video I did on COVID and how it might help. Moving forward, I think there's uh, also information. Humans. So you don't want to just use me mechanistic data. It's nice to see data that's applied to humans. And this is a human study. It just started to talk about out of all the 4,000 different bacterias, how two groups, Firmicutes and Bacteroides, seem to have a relationship. So they call it a Firmicutes to Bacteroides ratio. And they found that th this ratio in particular, when the Firmicutes went up, Bacteroides went down, meaning the ratio was higher, there was a higher chance of obesity. When the ratio was lower, there was a lower chance of obesity. I think they first got it in animal trials. So this is pretty good, but uh, it's very bland. You can't do too many tests on humans, but you can do it on animals. It helps. It helps to find avenues in order to treat disease. And I think that the data is very strong to say it does help. So now we have animal studies, mostly mice, with star mice. When you can manipulate the Firmicutes to Bacteroides ratio, you can actually lose weight or the opposite way too. If you manipulate it in the opposite way, you can gain weight. A high Firmicutes to Bacteroides ratio, obesity. A low Firmicutes to Bacteroides ratio, thinness. But here's the balancing beam. You can't go too low because if you go too low, it increases the chance of uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So that was one of the other associated markers is if you suffer from that, this might be a tough one. So if you have just a weight gain problem, 
So I think we have an option. If you have a weight gain problem and you have inflammatory bowel disease, be cautious, talk to me. It has to be personalized. Honestly, it really has to be personalized with everybody. In a broad kind of sense, I think we just have to give you the blessing that you can try a probiotic with very little recourse. I, I did have a patient in the urgent care center that I work at. I have to work at the urgent care center to pay for the practice, but that is okay. Uh, that's what my calling is and my cross that I have to bear. There was somebody that came in and he said that he used to have pemphigus, that's a skin disorder. It's an autoimmune skin disorder where you get these little blisters. Uh, I really think that the stuff on the outside is related to stuff on the inside. Uh, ectoplasm, endo, it, I, I think it's connected. So the idea that he said his colonoscopist or GI specialist put him on a probiotic and it seemed to help his pemphigus, brilliant. And I asked, how often do you change it? He said, no, I'm, I'm just taking the same one. I've always told my patients, I'd like you to mix up the roster. So if you take one probiotic and you finish it mostly 30 days, oh, there's stuff late. This is my son's, he hasn't been taking it. Hmm. If you finish this, I would go on to the next one, which would be a different one. So I like to change the different bacterias that you're exposing your microbiome to every bottle to two bottles. That's about every 30 to 90 days. So that you will always have a, the best roster available. Liken it to this. If you have an army and the army recruits nothing but guys that shoot pistols, that's a very, very good pistol army. Well, what happens when you have to shoot far away? You need the guy that does snipering or you need somebody that does heavy artillery. You need a tank driver. You need a pilot. You need a general. You can't just have guys that shoot pistols. So if you use one type of probiotic, meaning that the bacteria that you see there, I circled the one uh, to give you a spoiler that does help in that bottle. If you only have one that's useful and 10 that aren't, and you keep on taking that for years, I don't know that your team will get any better. If you mix it up and take other guys uh, and, and keep on going, maybe even a prebiotic, you will grow your team beautifully because one bacteria helps with the other. And again, back to what I was talking about, the bacteroides to firmicutinase ratio, this is awesome. This study, it goes through the mechanisms, it goes through the breakdowns of the bacteria. Uh, I might as well go ahead and write the spoilers now, so hang on a second. All right, that is all six of the bacterias that were found to affect weight loss. So if you can go through uh, and uh, hopefully you can see that with my handwriting. I have a doctor's handwriting, whatever that means. But if you check, if you write these guys down and you check, again, that's from animal studies, but if you check your probiotic list, I think having three is fair. So this is a pretty decent one, Garden of Life, that has three. Uh, this, uh, believe it or not, was actually pretty decent too. It had... This one had three in addition to a hint of a couple of prebiotics, Slippery Elm and Trifala, which check out my other video because those two together do produce, with the right bacteria, a lot of short-chain fatty acids. And short-chain fatty acids are the things, are the mechanistic ways that the gut heals up. Those are the substrates that are necessary, not only for the gut, but also for the mood of the mind, inflammatory markers in the heart. It gets everywhere. This I showed you already, and uh, there's a couple. This is a kid's probiotic. This caused me immediate diarrhea, but this has a lot, but a, a lot of bacteria. And we circled one here that was found to be of this list. Now, th these probiotics are probably not built for just weight loss. They're probably built for replenishing the gut. And this is Saccharomyces, which I think is awesome. I used to just rely on this for times when people are sick or have a flare-up, but at this point, it actually shows that this will help even with diabetes, lowering glucose. So I think this should be a daily, in addition to your choice of a probiotic that hopefully has all these. The other problem is the firmicutes to bacteroides ratio. Let me put it this way. Those are two big bacterial families that you can measure, but they're not alone. They're also dependent on the community of other good bacterias. And if you have just firmicutes and bacteroides, but you have like C. difficile, Clostridium difficile, that's not good because I don't care how good that ratio is, that C. diff is going to kill you by causing diarrhea and dysmotility, malabsorption. It's important to have a decent uh, bacterial load. It's important to have the right amount of Firmicutes to Bacteroides. Here is the final paper that I'll show that also talks about 
Prevotella to bacteroides ratio. If you had the higher Prevotella and bacteroides ratio, the better you would have weight loss. Uh, again, Fermi, this is Prevotella to bacteroides, you want it high. Firmicutes to bacteroides, you want it low. This last one was pretty decent. It just went on to state that there's another combination of bacterias that you would try to strive for. The other thing that was really cool with this study, and I think I outlined it here, is that this study was done while studying people on 56% carbohydrate, 30% fats, and 18% protein. That kind of diet is what, unfortunately, uh, it's probably higher with the carbohydrates in America, but uh, I think when you move away from that, you'll see a better bloom of good bacteria. So it, it no question, it helps to eat the right foods, but if you've been having your gut destroyed by your antibiotic doctor, there's ways to build it up. Or if you had to go through bowel resection or surgery, you have to get antibiotics, uh, root canals, you gotta get antibiotics. It, it's just the way it is. Even your beef that you're ordering, uh, eating at uh, from your grocery store probably has a ton of antibiotics and hormones in it too. Uh, chickens as well. So you'll be getting uh, these things, uh, even xenoestrogens from the environment. But the idea is if we're bulletproof, and you have a really well-functioning gut, you should be able to move on to easy weight loss. Well, not easy if you're BMI of 30, but I think we can chunk that down over the course of time. I always say, if you can get ready for the next decade and put, a, put everything you have into it, then you'll have a good decade. If you go into the decade with a whole bunch of shit going on, you'll be older and have to deal with more shit. You're just gonna wait and load your shoulders with a whole bunch of arduous tasks. Eventually, you'll have to start the lifestyle change. Might as well start it when you're kinda young, healthy. Uh, there's never a no. So even if you have a disability, I've had a patient without an ability to walk, and I pushed him on, at the last Shamrock Shuffle, and he started on his process. He's now living in Florida, doing great, hi, Eddie. Uh, but it's important to not use uh, roadblocks as an excuse. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. However, there's always a way around it. If your doctor can't figure it out, then get other help. So thanks for watching up until this point in time. Hopefully you can copy all these things down. Maybe I'll put them on the show notes. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe or share this with somebody else. It helps the algorithm for YouTube to support the channel so I can do more of these. And I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.